Reducing Fractions Lesson 106. Your objectives are to write the reduced form of a fraction. That's your objective. <laughs> Here we go. All right, so a quick review of reducing fractions to lowest terms. Basically, you've been through this before. These are equivalent fractions that we're discussing. You can see that 4 sixths is the same as or is equal to 2 thirds. And basically, all it is is representing the same amount. 2 thirds is 4 sixths in lowest terms. Lowest terms is an equivalent fraction with just smaller numbers. Again, if I were to say to you, would you like four sixths of a candy bar or two thirds, your answer would be, they're both the same. If I said to you, you can only have it if you know what is the lowest terms, you'd need to learn that it's two thirds and we'll figure out how this works. All right, let's get moving. All right. When we decide if a fraction can be reduced to lowest terms, we have to figure out, by using our number sense and reasoning, if the numerator and the denominator can be divided by the same number. Remember this? When we were multiplying by 1, even though if it was 2 halves or 3 thirds or whatever, okay? So, um... If I were to say to you 4 sixths divided by 2 over 2, which is still dividing by the giant 1, I'm going to end up with 2 thirds. You can see here 4 sixths is 2 thirds. Okay? Same deal. All right. Okay, so for example 1, write the reduced form of each fraction. So we have 6 eighths, we have 3 sixths and we have 6 sevenths. So we're going to take a look at 6 eighths first. Okay? If we divide 6 eighths by 2 over 2, because 2 will evenly go into 6 and 2 will evenly go into 8. Okay? 3 won't. 4 won't go into both exactly, but 2 will go into both. So if I divide 6 by 2, I get 3. If I divide 8 by 2, I get 4. You can see from this little picture here, this is 3 fourths, this is 6 eighths, and it is definitely equal. It's equivalent. So it's the reduced form right there. Let's take a look at 3 sixths. First of all, remember the rule that before we even divide anything, all I have to do is look at this numerator and go, wait a minute, that's exactly half of the denominator, and I know the answer is going to be half. But for the sake of going through how this works, we're going to find a number that both 3 and 6 have in common, the biggest number they have in common, okay, um, the greatest common factor as we call it, and we're going to see if we can make this work. Well, 3, if I count, I go 3, 6, and there's 6, I'm like, 3 is going to be the number they have in common, it's the biggest number they have in common. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and you can visually see that 3 sixths is the same as or equivalent to 1 half, and then we've just proven it mathematically. This is all your number sense and your mathematical reasoning. Okay, so my favorite one here is 6 sevenths. 7 is a prime number. The only number that 6 and 7 have in common is 1, and that's just not going to make a difference. If I were to divide by 1 over 1, you really don't even divide by 1 because it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be 6 sevenths. It's not going to make a, a difference. This is as good as it gets. This is already in what they call lowest terms. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at lesson practice. Okay? So what they want me to do is write the reduced form of each fraction. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, a little bit of division here. First thing I'm going to do is figure out what number do 2 and 4 have in common? What's the biggest number, the greatest common factor? Well, 2 is as high as I can go, and 2 does go into 4, so I'm going to divide by 2 over 2, remember, which is like the giant 1. 
2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 4 twice. You can also see that that rule, 2 is exactly 1 half of 4, so even without doing all that little extra division stuff, I know the answer is going to be 1 half. All right, so let's take a look at um, B, 2 sixths. Well, 2 is the highest number I can go with, so I'm going to go ahead and divide by 2. Because 6 is an even number, I know it's going to work. I'm not going to make the giant... Well, this will be the last time I'll do one more giant one. Now you just have to know that. Okay? That's what that means. So, 2 goes into 2 one time, 2 goes into 6 three times, that's going to be 1 third. Okay? For 3 ninths, 3 is the biggest number I can have here, and 3 does go into 9, so I'm going to divide by 3 over 3 which again equals that 1. 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 9 three times. That's one third. Maybe we should draw this one out a little bit. Let's do um, 2 sixths and 1 third. Okay, so here's 1 third. And now I'm going to make it 2 sixths. Same deal. Let me go ahead and do here is... Um, three ninths. Well, I'll just do one third first. There we go. And now I'm going to make it three ninths. All right. Some of you may need these pictures because your brain looks at things a little more artistically. And if that's what you need, go for it. All right. So on this one, we have. 3 eighths. So we want to take a real good look at that, and let's just go ahead and think. What can I divide by? What number goes into 3 and 8? Well, let's count. 3, 6, 9. There's no 8 there. This number is in its reduced form. It's just going to be 3 eighths. I can't reduce it any further because 3 and 8 have no numbers in common. Okay? There is no greatest common factor. Let's look at 2 tenths. Well, 2 is as high as we can go. 10 is an even number. I'm going to be able to divide by 2 over 2. 2 goes into 2 once. 2 goes into 10 five times. Okay, so 1 fifth is the equivalent fraction of 2 tenths. Let's take a look at 4 tenths. Okay? 4 is an even number, 10 is an even number, and they both have 2 in common, because I can't go 4, 8, it, the next number is 12, so it, it can't be 4. Not going to happen. So it has to be 2. And let's see how that works. 2 goes into 4 twice, 2 goes into 10 5 times, 2 fifths. Ta-da! Okay. So now we have a couple more we want to get done, and this is heavy-duty practice, so think and work along with me. We have 9 twelfths. What number do 9 and 12 have in common? Well, we know multiples of 9 are 3, so let's count by 3's. 3, 6, 9, 12. Bingo. It looks like it's going to be 3. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let's divide by 3 over 3. 3 goes into 9 3 times. 3 goes into 12 4 times. 3 fourths. That's as low as it's going to get. How about 9 tenths? 9, there, there's no greatest common factor between 9 and 10. Okay? If I go to 9, the next, um, the next multiple is going to be 18. It's just not going to work. And with 10, I can have 2, 4, 6, a ten, what it's just not going to work. So this is going to stay the same. It's just going to equal nine tenths. Same deal. No change. Let's try two eighths. Two even numbers. That means it definitely can be reduced. Divide by two over two because that's as high as I can go. Two goes into two once. Two goes into eight four times. The equivalent fraction of two eighths is one fourth. Five tenths, I'm not even going to divide because I want you to get used to going. This number is exactly half of this number. The answer is one half. Okay? On this one here, they're both even numbers and both 
uh, we can go, we can divide by 2. We cannot divide by 4. And 6 is more than half, so that's not going to work. We're going to have to divide by 2 over 2. I'm saying this out loud so that you hear how I'm thinking. 2 goes into 10 5 times, and 2 goes into 12 6 times. That is definitely um, a reduced fraction here. Let's take a look at 6 tenths. Looks like 2 is going to be it again. It's even number. And with 6, it definitely can't be 3, because 3 is not going to go into 9, and that's pretty much it. So 6 divided by 2 is going to be 3. And 10 divided by 2 is going to be 5. Okay? Practice with this. Take your time. All right? Make it make sense. All right, that is pretty cool. Now, you did use all your prior knowledge and all your practice, and it works together. Enjoy written practice. Have a great day, and have especially happy math day.